I've been using GitHub Copilot for a long time now, and it has saved me a ton of time while coding. Now, just a couple weeks ago, GitHub announced something called GitHub Copilot X, which takes Copilot to another level by integrating ChatGPT functionality into it. Now, GitHub Copilot X, I signed up for a couple weeks ago, but I have yet to get access, and I don't think they're giving out access to a lot of people yet. But in the meantime, there are a ton of Visual Studio Code extensions that you can install for free right now and get going. Let's take a look. So the one I'm gonna be reviewing today is called ChatGPT Genie AI. Now you can see if you look at the extensions marketplace and you just type ChatGPT, there are already a ton. I tried this ChatGPT 4, which includes both 3.5 and GPT 4, but I couldn't get it to work with my Ruby on Rails code base. So I tried ChatGPT Genie AI and it worked immediately, but there are a ton of others. Feel free to play around with them. This one has uh, quite a few reviews and it seems to work pretty well. You will need your ChatGPT API code for it and it seems to only support GPT 3.5, but I'm sure they're gonna be updating that soon to include GPT 4, since a lot of people have access to the GPT 4 API. So you can take a look. This is what it looks like. Feel free to install it, give it a try. I'm gonna show you what it looks like though. Let's take a look. This is a side project I was working on last year and it's a Ruby on Rails code base. So let's have it take a look and, and ask it some questions and see what it can do. So right here on the left side of Visual Studio Code, you can see the little genie icon. Go ahead and click on that. And this is the interface. So it gives you six buttons that you can play with. First is add tests, which I found to be incredibly useful. This is a Highlight some code, click one button, and it automatically spits out a bunch of tests for that selected code. Next, it can find problems. Uh, again, you have to highlight the code, and then it can actually find bugs or potential edge cases that you didn't think of. Optimize code works incredibly well. I've taken code that I wrote that I knew was a little bit overly complex, I clicked this button, and it spit out code that did the exact same thing, passed tests, and was a lot shorter and more clear to read. You have the explain code button, which is extremely valuable if you're jumping into a code base for the first time and you wanna get an understanding of what a method or even a whole file does. You can have it add comments. This isn't something that I've tested extensively, but um, but maybe comments aren't gonna be as useful as they once were because you can simply ask ChatGPT what something does. And then you have, comp which is something very akin to what GitHub Copilot already does. Let's try it out. So I have this model and we're gonna see what this does right here. And so what this code actually does is it sets up a state management for a webhook endpoint. And you can have a state such as active, paused, archived, or disabled. So let's ask it what it does. Click the button explain. This code is using AASM gem to define a state machine for an object. Code defines four states. It defines the four events that can be triggered. Overall, this code is setting up a state machine for an object with different states and events that can be triggered on the object. So yeah, that's really accurate of what it does. Ruby is really known for being a metaprogramming language and some of the code can get really complex and difficult to read because of that meta nature of it. So let's see if ChatGPT can understand some of that metaprogramming that I have in there that I think is actually pretty complex. I should have simplified it. And then let's ask it to simplify it. Okay, so I have this file called associated public IDs. And essentially what it does is it takes each of the models and it puts a public ID on it because I don't wanna expose the incremented index publicly. So instead we get this really nice public ID that we can expose through the API. So I'm gonna take the code, I'm gonna highlight it, and then I'm gonna ask it to explain it. Let's see, the first part of the code defines a method for each associated has many model that returns an array of public IDs from the associated models. Yep, and, and so it is explaining it pretty well. Next, this is a little bit complex, and I think we can probably make it a lot simpler. So let's click the optimize button. Yeah, that's a lot shorter. Let's take a look side by side. And you can see what ChatGPT did. It basically noticed that the has many belongs to and has one code is actually really similar and it can dry it up. So that's what it did. So it went from 45 lines down to 21, which is extremely impressive. And this is a lot cleaner to read. And now let's try finding problems, if there are any. The code does not have any syntax errors. However, there are a few potential issues. The code is using object.constGetMethod to get the class name, which can be dangerous if the class name is user provided. 
It would be better to use a more secure method such as module const get. Yeah, that's that's smart. Yep, this is the second part is true too. This code is using the define method method to dynamically create methods, which can be difficult to debug and maintain. Absolutely. And it says using a more explicit approach would be better. I was trying to be fancy. I wanted the code to be really short. So it's saying don't do that. I kind of agree. The code is using the and period operator to check for nil values, which is only available in Ruby 2.3 or later. If the code needs to be compatible with earlier versions of Ruby, it should be the standard nil question mark method instead. I didn't even know that till reading it just now. So it actually taught me something. That's really cool. Okay, next, let's have it write some tests for us. Again, I'm gonna highlight and I'm gonna say add tests. Okay, so this is actually right. And it's saying assert equal that the company public ID is equal to the customer company public ID. And so what this does is it's basically getting the company's public ID through the customer model and it's saying that it should be equal to the company's public ID, which is correct. So you, we also have three options for temperature, precise, balanced, and creative. And if you remember from one of my previous videos, temperature controls how creative, how adventurous the prompt responses will be from ChatGPT. And that value is between a zero and a one. And they give you three options here. Precise, I'm guessing that's gonna be zero, balance, 0.5, and creative one. And so you also have this little star button, which you can create shortcuts for different prompts that you have. So, uh, you know, you can click this and it'll say implement test for the following code. Obviously we have that already, so I'll go ahead and delete that. But if you come up with really cool prompts for ChatGPT, that's how you would save them. Now, one big problem I see with this, and maybe there's a way to do it and I just haven't figured it out, is you can only set the context for these prompts to be whatever you can highlight. So if I'm highlighting this, that's what the context of these prompts is gonna be for ChatGPT. What if I wanna do something more code wide? I have to assume that Genie actually has the context of the entire code base, otherwise it wouldn't be able to answer some of these questions, but I could be wrong. I would definitely like to see it have the context of the entire code base before answering questions. So I can ask questions about the entire code base rather than just the file that I have open and the code that I have highlighted. But otherwise, it's very cool, and, and I'm especially excited to see GitHub Copilot X because I suspect it's gonna uh, fix all these kind of rough edges. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.